Hey everyone, I just wanted to provide some theory crafting for the new Earthbreaker support uh, gem that's being included in patch 3.15 Expedition League. Um, I'll just play the trailer so you can see exactly what I'm talking about first before I get into the theory crafting. The Earthbreaker support gem can be linked to any slam skill. Upon use, it summons an ancestor totem that uses that slam on your behalf. In this example, we've created a build that summons multiple ancestor totems that each wield tectonic slam. As you can see, this build covers a large area in Fiery Death, while you get to stay out of harm's way. This is a powerful option for chieftains in particular, due to the various totem bonuses available on their Ascendancy passive tree. Adept players will also be wondering if the Earthbreaker support allows you to create leap-slamming totems, and the answer is absolutely. As with other Ancestor totems, the Earthbreaker support also provides a buff to you, granting some increased area of effect with melee skills. So this is the gem here as it appears at level 1. It has a 19% less damage multiplier up here and then a standard 30% less attack speed multiplier that all totem support gems have. Um, I'm going to presume that it scales up to a 10% less damage modifier by the time it reaches level 20. I'm also going to assume that the increased area of effect modifier on it uh, also scales, but that's not really important in terms of the theory crafting we're doing here. So. This is all based upon presumptions, keep in mind. Uh, for the sake of these calculations, I'm also going to be presuming that support gems are going to give an average of 25% more damage, and that's really relevant for a lot of the calculations we're doing here. I know a lot of this doesn't make sense, but I'm just going to sort of explain it as we go. And what I wanted to do here is provide both a comparison between Chieftain and Hierophant to get an idea of exactly where this support gem is likely going to see play, and then also to figure out what exact configuration of totems is worth using, because something you have to keep in mind when you're going to be using this gem is that are you going to be run, running this in conjunction with a second six link setup where you're going to be dealing damage to bosses yourself? Are you going to be running this with Runebinder where you can't deal damage yourself? And then how does this conflict with Ancestral Warchief and Ancestral Protector? Okay, so let's just jump straight into the theory crafting and I'll explain the numbers. Starting off with this line, which is kind of the baseline that we're using for all the other calculations. Now, how we get this number here, 6.74, and what it represents is basically the DPS assumption from just using a 6-link slime ability with Ancestral Warchief and Ancestral Protector Totem. The way you would do this is just by having your 6-link slime and then Ancestral Warchief and Ancestral Protector both linked to multiple totem support. So it would summon two of one and then two of the other, and that would overwrite one of the old ones and give you both buffs, right? And that basically assumes that your slam skill deals, say, one damage. It's then multiplied by 1.25 uh, five times, and the reason is because we're assuming that supports are going to give you an average of 25% more damage after the nerfs next patch. Again, all a presumption. You have to take it all with a grain of salt. And then after we get that number, we are multiplying it further by the multipliers for Ancestral Protector Totem, which I believe is 20% more attack speed, and Ancestral Warchief Totem, which is 18% uh, more melee damage off the top of my head. Right? And so that gives you 6.74. Of course, then with the totem node that causes nearby uh, enemies near your totems to take 16% increased damage, that's an additive multiplier, so if you have other source, things such as Intimidate, I believe it's going to stack on top, uh, which makes that multiplier in particular weaker, but we're going to just work with it for the time being, and I'll explain how I get to these numbers later on. So, if we basically normalize that down to 1, and then we compare all our other numbers to it, so this number here is then divided by 6.74 to give us a relative value. This, this way we can tell that this setup here gives us 20% more damage compared to just running the 6-link. And so what this setup here is, is running our 6-link uh, in, say, your weapon, and then in your body armor, running Earthbreaker support with the slam skill, with multiple totem support, with three supports uh, in addition to that, and then Ancestral Protector Totem. And the way you would do that particular setup is by putting down one Ancestral Protector Totem and then two Earthbreaker support totems. Even though you could put three, uh, you know, we're basically trying to figure out how much damage we get by only putting down two and having room for our Ancestral Protector Totem. Keep in mind, for Chieftains, you gain double the benefit of your uh, Ancestral Warchief and Ancestral Protector Totems, and so that is 40% more attack speed and 36% more damage off the top of my head, right? For the others, it's a bit less. And the reason I've then provided these comparisons is because I wanted to get an idea of which Ascendancy I think is going to use them. And 
we'll just jump into what things I don't think are going to be used with Earthbreaker support. So to start with Ancestral Bond. In the clip that I showed you, they appeared to be using Ancestral Bond. There was no, uh, they were dual warding weapons, so I assume no shield was being used. Uh, that rules that out. Obviously can't be Soul Totem, so that rules uh, that out. And the character wasn't attacking themselves, they were allowing only the totems to attack. And on top of that, they were summoning two totems at once, which could only be with multiple totem support. So that gives you your one base totem, plus two from multiple totem support, plus one from Ancestral Bond for four. And that was the limit that we saw in the video. And I don't really think that's going to see any play at all. I mean, people may play it without having the understanding that it's good, but I don't think it's good. I don't think it's going to be what people settle on, and I think people are going to work out really quickly that that's not the way to play totems. Um, it's something that a lot of people misunderstand about totems, especially if they don't play totems themselves, is that the reason why Hierophant spell uh, totems use Ancestral Bond is because of Soul Mantle. Soul Mantle provides such a large benefit to totems that you're basically at that point deciding to all in on your totem damage since your totem damage is going to be way higher than the damage you can inflict yourself anyway thanks to your 7th gem and then the plus one free totem that you're getting from the body armor. This doesn't really happen when you're playing with this uh, Earthbreaker support, the melee setup. So. Just to explain here, basically, if you're running Ancestral Bond and then you're running Earthbreaker support, you'll slam multiple totem support and three supports. That gives you uh, 0.67 times the damage of just running a six link with your Ancestral Warchief and Ancestral Protector. So you're cutting your damage down by about a third by running this, you know, hypothetical setup where you're running four Earthbreaker support totems as was shown in the video, right? So the setup that they showed in the video, I don't think that's what people are going to be settling on, to be perfectly honest. And then here are other, uh, a bunch of other configurations for Ancestral Bond that are all equally kind of weak, to be honest. So this is if you were to run the two uh, Earthbreaker totems and then the one Ancestral Protector, this setup would be running... Oh, and just to clarify the way you would do that is because you're getting the plus one totem limit, you would run the Earthbreaker uh, support with an extra support and not with multiple totem support. And that would still, and then you would run your ancestral protector with multiple totem support, so that would raise your limit above uh, the base two that you're getting from your earthbreaker support. So, yeah, equally useless. I don't think, as you can see, all the ancestral bond numbers are much lower, right? We can rule them out right away. Next, we'll move on to hierophant. Hierophant's numbers kind of look competitive, but keep in mind, I'm only taking into account the first two multipliers or the first two sorry totem nodes for each ascendancy which is a little bit unfair when we talk about the berserker numbers but i'll sort of explain why so the remaining two nodes that a hierophant can get are divine guidance and conviction of power and that is the enhanced mind over matter and then the free power and endurance charges they're not really big offensive nodes they are kind of nice defensively but they don't really fit with what melee builds tend to be doing the endurance charges are nice but you don't really then get to consume them so it means that you're running a weaker immortal core and stuff like that. I don't really see Hierophant being used in this way since the multipliers aren't that much bigger. So the best multiplier you can get here is by having the Hierophant summoning two Earthbreaker support totems with Ancestral Warchief and Ancestral Protector, in addition to using a six link attack separately, right? And that gives you 26% more damage compared to this, which is giving you 20% more damage. The thing is with Hierophant, you're going to have to spend extra points on the tree paving downwards to the melee part of the tree, and that's going to then cut your power out. And on top of that, the Chieftain has other nodes that are kind of useful, like fire penetration, um, fizz to fire conversion, which makes certain unique weapons a lot easier to fit into the build. And these are all really important things. It's very hard to calculate the damage here, and, and just for those people wondering, the Ritual of Awakening, I think the Hierophant node is, the one that gives you 5% more damage per totem, that's being factored into these numbers here, right? I haven't forgotten about it, that's what's being used to get these numbers. But yeah, basically, the amount of extra damage Hierophants are deriving from this setup over Chieftain, I think doesn't make it worth using Hierophant over Chieftain. I, I think Chieftain is going to be prefer the preferred ascendancy out of the two. Okay, and I think we'll then just move on to talking about this because I think this is pretty much the only relevant configuration for Chieftain since it's the strongest one, and that is using a six link attack in conjunction with two Earthbreaker uh, totems and your Ancestral Protector. That's the ideal way to run this support as a Chieftain, but I don't really think that's going to see use either, right? So the thing is, 
we're talking about slams here. The best slam multipliers in the game come from war cries, and war cries don't have any interaction with totems. Now, some people may be optimistically thinking, well, we'll just use war cries and totems. I don't really think that's going to work that way because you've got to start thinking about the amount of buttons you're pressing. So you've got to run intimidating cry. Um, I think it's, I want to say seismic cry is the other war cry. I forget the names off the top of my head, but there are like two war cries at least that you're running, uh, not counting the endurance charge generating one, right? We'll, we'll just pretend two war cries there. Then you have to say apply an Arcadis brand for wave of conviction and a curse that's three buttons then Val Haste for example uh, I guess you would not run Val Haste but you'd run Val Ancestral Warchief and Ancestral Warchief and then potentially Ancestral Protector Totem depending on like different configurations here it's, it's gonna be start to be too many buttons I don't really think you're gonna be mixing Warcries and Totems right I think you're just gonna go with one or the other the other thing also is that the Warcry playstyle is very different. It's slower attacks. You're not really caring about DPS. You're caring about big individual hits, which means a lot of this is kind of irrelevant, right? So if you think about this, running this Earthbreaker setup, you're giving up a whole extra six link, and all you're getting back in return is 20% more boss DPS, and that's as long as you're also giving up Warcry's. I don't think giving up Warcry's is worth this 20% more DPS. I think Warcry's add far more than 20% more DPS to, to a typical slam build, right? And in this case, You'd be swapping out, say, Ancestral Protector for Ancestral War Chief, so it's giving you more damage and synergizing with your Warcries. But again, totally irrelevant, right? That's where I think Berserk comes in. And I, I th think these totems are going to be mainly used as Berserkers in the long term once people start to get a grip on how they scale, how they interact with all the other multipliers that melee and slam characters have available to them. Berserkers playing slams is not a very popular thing. You don't see it very often because there is anti-synergy there. The Warcry's focus on these slow, high, uh, like, large hits, and Berserker has a lot of attack speed built in, right? You get the, I think they are Challenger Charges off the top of my head? What are they called? Blitz Charges, sorry. Challenger Charges are the other ones. So you get the Blitz Charges going off, and then you also have the increased attack speed from Rage, which is a lot of attack speed built into a build, right? Now, I, know, I do want to acknowledge again, Chieftain has other multipliers, so these aren't the final numbers. But if you start to look at the multipliers that you're getting from a Berserker, so we're assuming you're going to go for Blitz, you're going to go for Warbringer and Aspect of Carnage, perhaps that's, you know, thinking optimistically or, you know, you know like, there, there are stuff worth taking here, right? But we're just going to assume those four Ascendancy nodes, you start getting much larger multipliers when you look at, you know, the various configurations Berserkers can run, and I think these are going to be the main two configurations that people are going to use in the long run. And so the first one is basically running the six link attack in conjunction with two earthbreaker support totems and an ancestral protector totem just to reiterate the way you're going to run your other your second six link is having your slime skill earthbreaker support multiple totem support then three support gems you're going to click the button once to summon two and then the third totem you summon is not going to be a third earthbreaker but rather it's going to be ancestral protector totem Whereas the alternative to that, which is only very slightly less DPS, but it's one less button, which means less micromanagement, is running your six link attack and then running three Earthbreaker support totems where you, same configuration, where you're going a slime skill, Earthbreaker support, multiple totem support, and then three support gems, right? And that is giving you 160% more damage over the base six link with Ancestral Wardreef and Ancestral Protector. So... I know it's way too early to tell. I know we're making a lot of presumptions regarding the, the you know average value of a support gem in 3.15 and going forward. We're making you know presumptions about the kind of uh, damage multipliers on Earthbreaker support when it's at level 20. All these sorts of things, right? There are a lot of things up in the air. A lot of things we can't say for certain. But I think if you take everything into consideration and plot the numbers down. I think the main two takeaways here are, first off, that Ancestral Bond is not going to be the way to play this. I don't think you're going to want to play a dedicated melee totem build. I think you're going to want to use these totems to augment your boss damage, or your the damage you do to rares, or to provide you with extra area control when you're doing mechanics such as Legion or Ritual, Blight, stuff like that. And the second takeaway here is that I think these aren't going to be particularly good for any kind of a slam build that attacks slowly. Warcries are still going to be the stronger multiplier, even if they nerf Warcries next league, which I think is fairly likely. You're still going to be seeing, you know, chieftains and 
champions and all that sort of play with Warcries, not totems. I think totems are going to be for Berserkers, right? Berserkers can't use the Warcries. They would much love just something that is a straight additional more multiplayer onto the DPS. You're going to invest a lot of money in your slam Berserker, but then you're going to have tons of damage to show for it. You're going to absolutely nuke bosses thanks to the extra damage you're getting from your new totem setup. And that's basically what I think the end game of Earthbreaker is. That, that's I, I will be personally very surprised after plotting down these numbers if we see any kind of alternatives. I do think there's a possibility that, say, a content creator like Mathel creates a dedicated Earthbreaker support totem build where people, a, a popularized version of the build starts to get played, even though it's suboptimal in pretty much every way. That's kind of par for the course when it comes to like Mathel builds, for example, they're not designed to be, you know, optimized in terms of TPS. They're just a lot of the time fun, quirky builds, right? So there is the potential that Mathel plays one and it's just strong anyway. And even though it's not optimal, you know, according to these numbers, it, it just becomes the popular way to play it. But I think the way the top players are going to be using this is as a berserker in high investment uh, slime builds. So yeah, I hope that was helpful. Uh, I'm gonna obviously reevaluate all these numbers and all the theory crafting here once we get more information about Earthbreaker support, but this is kind of the best we can do for now. I know it's been less than 24 hours since the reveal, so there's still a lot more to think about, but these are kind of my initial thoughts of the initial theory crafting that I've done for Earthbreaker support. And I was considering potentially making a League starter build, you know, for some people that were interested in it for a dedicated melee totem build, but now that I've plotted the numbers down, I don't think that's really worth it because uh, I think, you know, this is going to be a high investment tool, not a League starter or not a new alternative way to play with totems or to play melee. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.